In this session, we will be looking at integrating sustainability into supply chain. We will specifically be focusing on uh, the approach to sustainable supply chain management. And for that, for starting purposes, I'm going to use this overarching framework. And I want to sort of focus and draw your attention to this step here. The whole idea would be that I focus on some aspect of the operations of an organization, which typically would be my entire supply chain, all the way from sourcing to final disposal after usage by the consumer, and how to integrate sustainability into the supply chain, looking at each and every concept and aspect thereof. Now, for us, before we look at that, we need to look at sustainability concerns, specifically in global supply chain. If I look at the economic goals as an example, uh, there's cost, quality, speed of delivery, flexibility, resource utilization, visibility and innovativeness. So that's some of the things that I, that I look at in terms of the concerns. Social, because remember I will look at economy, social and environment. Social, the challenges or concerns really, respect for human and workers' rights. Those that work in the supply chain. Avoid and eradicate child labor, bonded labor, health and safety concerns and working conditions. And then finally, the environmental problems, uh, pollution, climate change, decline in ecosystems and biodiversity, already having loss of biodiversity in some areas or some respects, deforestation, soil degradation, resource depletion, and uh, fresh water crisis. So economic goals, social issues, environmental prob problems. All of these sort of go and lie with concerns, sustainability concerns, in global supply chains. Now there's a very nice video that you can go and have a look uh, in YouTube uh, on what do business leaders think about supply chain sustainability. CEOs of consumer and retail products highlight sustainable supply chain concerns, challenges, breakthroughs, innovations, collaboration and momentum in this video. So please go and have a look at that. Back to what it is that we want to talk about here. Still focusing on a competitive advantage. Always in terms of sustainability, it's not just about saving the planet. It's about the cohesion, economy, society, green environment. For me to achieve a competitive advantage, resources and all capabilities generated through this sustainable supply chain management, I, look, I need to look at responding to threats and opportunities. I need to uh, control, uh, rare, it's controlled by a few competing firms. So this is when I analyze this sustainability supply chain management. It's valuable, it's rare, it's intimate, costly for rivals to reproduce. So if you integrate sustainability into your supply chain, what it's telling you here is that it's valuable because it responds, it's rare, not everybody has it, it's costly to implement, so it can give you some sort of a competitive advantage. It's not always good that it's costly because it means not necessarily all organizations will be able to implement it, and you actually want that. And then there's organization policies and procedures should support exploitation of the above three. If I look at integrating sustainability into, into the supply chain, again, I'm looking at product design. Do I consider increasing efficiency, lower use of natural resource, water, energy, electricity, manufacturing byproducts, so out of the waste as opposed to just having clear waste or just straight away disposal, byproducts, uh, during the product use, looking at the life extension of the product, making it more durable, considering the product end of life cycle, uh, what do I do in terms of reuse and recycling, and a recovery process at the end of life. So these are the aspects of integrating supply chain in uh, sustainability into the supply chain process. Now, there's various strategies to integrate supply chain. And I have this sort of extreme here. I have either reactive 
or proactive, which is sort of the, the further apart extremes from one another. And here in the middle, I have defensive and accommodative. Let's unpack these four. Proactive strategies uh, define sustainability goals. So it starts with goals and objectives. It educates the suppliers. It sanctions suppliers. It makes it part of the criteria of supplier selection. It designates organizational members to be in charge of that. It monitors suppliers. It works very, very closely with suppliers. That's proactive. If I look at the framework for integrating sustainability into the supply chain in terms of what Pajol and Wu is telling us, I'm looking at innovation capability, positive management orientation, uh, an approach that want to look at things more systemically, reconceptualize my supply chain members, the suppliers, the buyers, the deliverers of raw goods or semi-manufactured semi, uh, goods, conceptualizing reconceptualizing that, collaborating with non-traditional supply chain many, uh, members, and supplier continuity is an important outcome. So you kind of want to build that relationship. As you go more green, they should go more green. You should do it together in a much more transparent manner. And you want to ensure that the supply chain performs well on traditional metrics, and therefore you will institute a measurement and reward system. So this is what's recommended by Pajol and Wu in terms of a kind of a framework that can help you with integrating sustainability into the supply chain. If I look at this model over here, this is my integration part. This would be the new behaviors. So here you can see I reconceptualize who's part of my supply chain. I focus on my supplier-based uh, supplier continuity transparency, traceability, where does this product come from, who made it, who dug it up, where is it dug, uh, dug up from, what are you doing in terms of corporate social responsibility, etc., etc. And over here on this end, so if I take this slide here and I put it into a graphical format, this is more or less what it is that I'm looking at. I want to reward and incentivize to bring about a change of behavior. These are the sustainability outcomes, performance, environmentally, and social performance. What does this mean? Way forward is much more proactive in terms of design. Firms and suppliers should adopt and implement voluntary codes of conduct, not always wait for legislation and regulation. Long-term relations needs to be established, voluntary incent, uh, uh, initiatives, sort of filling regulatory vacuum. So we can't always wait for governments to make regulation and legislation. Organizations need to lead in terms of this, making it much more proactive. Thank you.